Let's venture into some of the more esoteric robotic drives, starting with the Strain Wave Gear, or known by its commercial name, Harmonic Drive, invented in 1957 by C.W. Musser. It is a nifty little gadget, but it's really hard to wrap your brain around it. Now, while this series of courses has always been geared towards the home hobbyist, I recognize that there are students enrolled who want to get into robotics professionally. And so the next few lessons on these esoteric drive mechanisms are surprisingly important. ASEA used the harmonic drives extensively in their first robots, and as you'll see, with good reason. Harmonic drives are also used in aerospace. For example, the drivetrain of the Apollo Moon Rover used electric motors geared down through harmonic drives to drive the wheels. The Skylab, which was the first station put into orbit in the, by the US, it used harmonic drives to deploy its solar panels. My college instructors had a working see-through plastic harmonic drive for demonstration. I sat there and played with that thing extensively, trying to comprehend it, and I'll be honest with you, I never did figure it out. It wasn't until many, many years later that I understood the principle of the mechanism. Now, we didn't go into understanding how this drive worked in our college class. It didn't really matter. Either it worked or it was broken and we replaced it. <laughs> but these things were so incredibly reliable that no one in the college or in industry could recall one ever failing. But obviously they are important for those of you who wish to enter into robotics on a professional level because you will encounter these in industry. So you can see here I have two racks, a red rack, which will serve as the stator, and a blue rack, which will serve as the output. The blue rack has two teeth fewer than the stator rack. And you can see that as a result, the teeth only line up in two locations along the length of the racks. So I have a third rack here, which is flexible. And it is called the flex spline. The flex spline rack can now only mesh together with the other two racks in two places where the teeth are aligned. If I force the flex spline into the other two racks, say here, where the teeth are not aligned, it acts as a wedge, forcing the teeth to align with each other, moving the blue output rack. Now the red stator rack would be mounted to say the robot body or a foundation of some sort. The output rack is mounted to the load. And by forcing the flex spline into the two racks, the output rack will move to align its teeth with the stator and the flex spline teeth. You remember how powerful the simple machine, the wedge was, right? Well, look at this. The Flex spline is acting as a wedge to force the output rack to move relative to the stator rack. Now, if I take just a, a bearing and apply a force to the, against the back of the flex spline, and I move that bearing along the length of the flex spline, it uses the teeth on the flex spline to work as wedges all along the racks, forcing the output rack to move. So my input force only has to move this bearing laterally and using the huge mechanical advantage of the wedge to move one rack relative to the other. Of course, it is reversible as well by merely changing the direction of the bearing movement. So this setup 
actually has a mechanical advantage of about 50 to 7. The input moves about 50 millimeters, causing the output rack to move about 7 millimeters. There are, of course, two places where all the teeth line up. So if I had two bearings moving in unison, it would double the effort by making use of two wedges, forcing the racks to move at the same time. Notice as well, if the bearing is stopped, the wedge is still in place and there is no movement allowed between the stator and output racks. It has zero backlash. Wow, this is shaping up to be an awesome drive mechanism. How can we modify this to make it even more useful? So if I take these and bend them all into a, a circle, And I put a cam of some kind as a rotary input, which simply forces the cam or bearings out in opposite directions. This will drive the flex spline in a rotary fashion. With the input. The cam will force the teeth of the flex spline into the teeth of the stator and output ring gears and so as it turns it will cause the stator and output rings to turn relative to each other. It is this flex spline that is the most complicated part of the harmonic drive, but also the reason for its huge success. It is difficult to make, uh, to make one of these in your home shop, but it can be done. 3 printing harmonic drives have been, or 3D printed harmonic drives have been made, but finding a hard yet pl flexible plastic for the flex spline is difficult. You can probably make one, but it would be unreliable at best. So I have here a demonstration unit that was 3D printed from a design provided by Simon Merritt on YouTube. And he was inspired by a post on Hackaday where one hacker, hardware hacker came up with the idea of using a timing belt as the flex spline in a 3D printed harmonic drive. So here you can see the timing belt. It's been flipped inside out and it's locked into the green stator gear. And you can see the, uh, the bearings which flex the timing gear belt against the orange output gear. So this bolt going through the middle goes through ball bearings on the stator and output gears. Uh, so they both freewheel on the bolt, but the input rotor is double lock nutted onto the bolt in the middle. So as you turn the bolt, it turns the input rotor, which moves the bearings around the inside circumference, which moves the wedge in the teeth uh, into the teeth of the orange output gear. The orange output gear has two teeth fewer than the green stator gear. So let's add some input power so you can see it in action. And this drive has about a 45 to one reduction ratio. Notice we can also reverse the direction. And there is zero backlash between the two gears, like none. So let's take a look 
at an actual harmonic drive from my Fanuc robot. Now here you can see the flex spline. Uh, it's got very fine teeth. And yes, it is flexible, but not much. <laughs> Literally, the flexing that takes place in the operation is on the order of a millimeter or two. In this particular harmonic drive, they've only got the stator gear. There is no output gear. The output comes off of the flex spline. You can actually see the output here. So the flex spline has a few teeth fewer than the stator gear. and a cam is rotated by the drive motor which forces the flex spline teeth out to engage with the stator teeth. Because of the difference in tooth count, the flex spline rotates at a speed considerably slower considerably slower than the rotation of the cam. So, while very difficult, you can make strain wave, strain wave gear drives at home. For those of you in industry, they're actually a really impressive mechanism and there's really no maintenance involved. Uh, they're either completely broken completely or working. They do wear out over time and can build up some backlash. However, most factories replace their robots you know, every couple of years, sometimes as often as every year just because the wear and tear on the robots causes them to become more and more inaccurate over time. And accuracy on an assembly line is of paramount importance. So you'll see most factories opt for a preventative maintenance attitude and simply replace the entire robot assembly line. 